Okay. So today we're going to talk about first meiosis and then um, later I'll talk to you about mitosis. In both cases we're talking about eukaryotic cell division. So if you can come over here and look for a minute. First of all, let's talk about the cell cycle. And so the cell cycle, I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but the cell cycle is Pac-Man eating a piece of candy corn, okay? And so what we see here is that this is the M phase. So this is prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And you guys all talked about that in lecture. And then we can divide the rest of this Pac-Man. This entire line represents the length of the cell's life from when it first comes about until it's going to divide. And this can be divided into G1 and G2 and also into S. And the S stands for synthesis. And what's synthesized there is DNA. And that's important for us to think about. And what we're going to see here today is that these pipe cleaners are going to represent our chromosomes, which as we know are DNA with histones associated. And so we have chromosome 1 and we have chromosome 2. These are homologous chromosomes, okay? And they don't have the same alleles. They have the same gene for pipe cleaner color of course, which that's really just an example. But one allele says be red and the other allele says be white. So even though we have the same gene on these two, they're not the same allele. And so they're homologous chromosomes. Now, when we're getting ready to divide, the S phase in interphase is going to be the place where the DNA is replicated. So let's go ahead and replicate our DNA, okay? So we replicated our DNA, which means we copied it. We synthesized another uh, chromosome. So we still have two chromosomes here, okay? There's four chromatids. So if we just focus on this, we have two chromosomes actually, but they're both exactly the same. And the best example I can give you here of this is if I have your birth certificate, I have information about you. If I make a photocopy of it, I have the same amount of information, okay? But I have two copies of it, and that's what we have here. We have actually two chromosomes, or more appropriately, we have one chromosome with two chromatids. And then here, we have the homologous chromosome, again with two chromatids. So now, let's just talk real quick about what's gonna happen with mitosis and then meiosis, and then we'll talk about the lab today. So if we were going to have mitosis happen, which is cloning, it's an exact split, so what we, the cell we wind up with, the daughter cell will be exactly as the mother cell. We would line up, let's say our equatorial plate is right here, okay? We would line up our sister chromatids on the equatorial plate, and we would divide then each of those so that cell number one, which would be right here, would have a white and red chromosome, and cell number two, which would be over here, would have a white and red chromosome. Okay, so let's go back to where we have a cell that now has its DNA replicated, and it's gonna go now through not mitosis, but meiosis. Now in meiosis one, we have prophase one, and in prophase one, something really important happens that does not happen in mitosis. It's called crossover. And in crossover, what's gonna happen is two non-sister chromatids, so one of the white and one of the red, are going to form a chiasm, which is a connection, okay? And when that happens, right there, they're going to snip off, okay? And they're going to literally exchange the DNA. They're gonna just swap a piece. So now, in our example, look what's happened. Crossover has occurred. So now look, a little piece of the white is here on the red, and a little piece of the red is here on the white. So now let's go ahead and finish out what would happen with meiosis. So first, in meiosis one, we line up on the equatorial plate. Okay, here's our plate right here, still drawn. And we separate our homologous chromosomes, okay? So now we have, okay, cell one. So let's erase this. We have cell one, 
okay, that's going to have that chromosome. And here's cell two that's going to have this. So we now have one chromosome and one chromosome, each with two chromatids. And it turns out that as it is, we now have a haploid. Before we had a diploid, we only have now one version of the chromosome here and there. But we can't stop. We have to have meiosis too. Because remember, we can only have one version of each gene in this haploid condition. Because when we bring it back together with somebody else's genes, we have to actually all have an even amount. So now we're going to divide our sister chromatids. So this one goes here, and this one goes here. So we would ultimately wind up with four cells. So here'd be a cell, and here'd be a cell. And if we really look at this, what we have now, because of crossover, we have a haploid, a haploid, a haploid, a haploid, each with one chromosome. That's half of what we started with, okay? And none of them are the same. Each of them are different. If only a little bit, they're still different. And so now we have our four haploids, and that's what happens in meiosis. Now we're gonna use two different things to really discover that or study that here in the lab. And what we're going to do is first work with meiosis, and we're gonna use some uh, mutant ferns, okay? Now, you're gonna look at the fern life cycle. There'll be a video that will be posted, most likely it's a YouTube video, so you'll look at the fern life cycle, okay? And um, when you uh, look at how that functions, we're gonna talk about the fern life cycle and talk about where we see meiosis in the life cycle and where we see fermentation. But what we're physically going to do in this lab, besides really understand meiosis more thoroughly, and I hope all of you will sit down with your pipe cleaners and walk through that so you're sure to understand it, is we're going to actually inoculate our auger plates with the spores from our fern. We want them to grow, okay? So these spores have come about as the result of meiosis. We purchased them ready to go. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna put the name on the bottom of our agarose plate, okay? So we put our name, so I'm gonna put Sherry, that's my name right here, with our, our Sharpie, okay? And then I'm gonna take my plate, turn it right side up, and what I wanna do is take my, you'll actually have some kind of a cotton swab or a utensil that you'll put in there the cotton swab, if you're using that, will cause the spores to stick to it. And you're gonna get some spores out, okay? And you're gonna gently put the lid back on. Don't, don't spill. And then you're gonna open up your uh, plate just a little bit and tap, 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 tap all the way around so that you get the spores distributed all over the surface of the auger. You don't want a big clump right there. You want them distributed evenly. And it doesn't take a very big dip. It just takes a little bit and you tap, 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 tap and spread it all over the place. And then you're gonna take some parafilm, which will probably already be cut for you, but you cut a strip of parafilm, okay? And you wanna seal that and you're gonna seal it just like this. And you can see the parafilm, oops, mine came loose. The parafilm just sticks just like that. See how it just sticks? And it seals that plate shut so that moisture can't leak out. And then we're gonna take that and we're ultimately gonna put it into a growth chamber like this one right here, okay? And after we've done that, we're gonna place it underneath the counter um, underneath a light or in the window where the plants can begin to grow. And if we'll look right here, we can see that we have here already some plants that are growing. And we can see here's some small plants and they'll grow even larger to look like this in these plates. And we're gonna use those later on in the semester. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. Make sure you're comfortable with meiosis and the fern life cycle and next week we'll look at mitosis.